And welcome to this edition of Hidden History, Stories from the Secret City. I'm Keith McDaniel, along with my co-host, Ray Smith. Good afternoon, Ray. How are you? I'm doing very good, Keith. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. As a matter of fact, I got some good news today. Uh, we were nominated, yeah. this, this program, Hidden History, uh, was nominated for an Award of Excellence uh, this year with the East Tennessee Historical Society, and we just yeah. found out that we will be receiving a History and Media Award of Excellence from the Historical Society uh, at an event next week in, in Knoxville. So I'm, uh, I'm tickled, uh, tickled to hear that. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah that, that's good. Congratulations to you and me. Uh, we started this, you know, back in what, February of 2020? Yep. Because the pandemic had... Uh, prevented us from doing a podcast so we turned it into a video cast and i have really enjoyed being able to do this and uh, the people that we've had on are, have just been uh, outstanding so i'm glad that the program's being recognized i'm also proud that katie watt recognized the yeah. value of the program and nominated us for this award so yeah i look forward to seeing you over there on tuesday i'll, I'll be there <laughs> with bells on as they say so um, we have got a, uh, a good friend uh, who's our guest today. He's a good friend to, to both of us and to all of Oak Ridge and, and much of East Tennessee. So, uh, uh, Ray, why don't you introduce our guest? I'll be glad to. Jim Dodson is not only a pillar of the community here in Oak Ridge, but he has a heavy hand in the arts in Knoxville and even in, uh, in Nashville at the state level. He's involved in many activities, especially those that are beneficial to the, to the students in, in our school system. Uh, but he's also been, as you mentioned, a good friend of ours and, and involved in us, with us in several endeavors. Uh, he and I talked about bringing him on this program and, uh, and I'm glad that we've been able to do that. Of course, Jim, I think most recently, the activity that we were involved in uh, just last week had to do with the, uh, well, a week or so ago, had to do with the uh, Tennessee Historical Commission and the uh, uh, historical marker that you wrote and we approved through the commission and actually got uh, got mounted over at the swimming pool. You want to start off by talking a little about that? Oh, sure. Um, I think we all agree the significance, historical significance, as well as tourism significance of our, our terrific um, spring-fed outdoor pool that we have in Oak Ridge. Yeah. Uh, that thing is 70-plus uh, years old, and we're just so fortunate to have, have that in our community. Um, and one of the things that a lot of us, Ray, uh, you, as well as uh, the Oak Ridge Heritage and Preservation Association, and many others got behind about eight or nine months ago when mm -hmm. there was talk of the possibility of, is that pool going to be around? Are we going to do something to you know, save it? Or are we going to try to restore it? What are we going to do to recognize the fact that we have that? asset in our community and um, I decided you know what I need to do is I need to uh, first and foremost we need to have an historical marker that's set there beside it just like other landmarks that we have in our community and uh, write that uh, historical marker and then it took a while uh, we uh, went back and forth in a good way with the Tennessee Historical Commission and I really do appreciate particularly Linda Wynn she was one of the people who I worked with uh, very exclusively with that. And then um, we had to get some permissions. We had to get permission from the city of Oak Ridge. So our city manager actually um, signed off on that and our city attorney agreed the, on the importance of it. And then that day when we unveiled that, uh, it was really a pleasure for me to be beside our Oak Ridge historian, Ray Smith, and pull that, um, that cloth off that really nice historical marker that tells about how it started and its uh, historical significance. So we were able to do that. Uh, again, we had um, the Lieutenant Governor there. Uh, we had uh, State Representative there. We also had 
Parks and Recreation was there, Katie Watt with Explore Oak Ridge. You had so many people there, and I'm not going to leave this out. Oak Ridge National Labs Federal Credit Union sponsored that. They paid for the historical marker. So there were so many people in, in that audience that, that rainy day that made this happen. And uh, that's one of the things about Oak Ridge, and I think both of you all would agree, that people come together in our community around great causes. And that swimming pool is just a, a super asset to our community. And I'm so glad that we were able to recognize it on that day. It was almost celebrating uh, its birthday all over again. <laughs> now that's true. And, and, and the mayor was there as well. And we, yeah. did, we did squeeze that in between rain showers. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> I was giving John a hard time about it, head of the Parks and Recreation, John Hedrick. And uh, he said, right, it ain't raining. <laughs> yeah. So I said, you're a good man, I'm glad. But it rained right before we got there and right after we, well, as we were leaving. So we got it in though, and, uh, and that was a good event. I can't miss the opportunity of saying that that spring fed pool goes all the way back to the Emory Road and the uh, cross pond it's what it was called at that time because of the Cross family that owned the property there. And I've since learned that one of the Oliver families owned that property uh, later on in the 1800s. And they used that water to, to uh, be the, the water for a distillery. They actually made whiskey there at that Cross Pond. I didn't know that until uh, after we put the sign up, somebody contacted me and said, my Great grandfather lived there and and used the water uh, to distill whiskey. <laughs> it's too bad we didn't have a uh, celebratory drink. I know it, a, a little sample would have been good. <laughs> it's probably been aged a little bit, but right. anyway, that was a good event. I, I appreciate your effort in that, and was glad to be a part of it. Uh, and I'll use this other opportunity to say that. I am on the Tennessee Historical Commission and I just got reappointed for another three years. So we've got Oak Ridge on the commission for at least three more years. So glad to be able to serve there. Okay, let's talk a little about some other things that you've been involved with immediately and recently. Uh, I, these murals that are showing up, uh, at least a couple of them you've been involved with and I'm hoping that they're gonna be more. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah, I sure can. Uh, so, you know, I've noticed how downtown Knoxville has grown significantly, and I think that's not separated from the fact that they've had more art in public places, uh, mm -hmm. particularly through an organization called Dogwood Arts. And um, I made some connections with them. I used to be on the board of Dogwood Arts and still do a lot of work with them. But one of the biggest connections I made was with a local artist who actually is a resident of Oak Ridge. Her name is Megan Lingerfeld. And um, she was responsible for being contracted by Explore Oak Ridge, Katie Watt and myself um, to do the mural that you see down at the waterfront, which has basically Oak Ridge in it but it also shows all the different activities that take place on our historic waterfront that generates so much tourism activity. And um, she signed that and Explore Oak Ridge is uh, tagged on it as well, but it's just a great place when you're driving into our community so you can see you know, what Oak Ridge is about, but also it has that iconic Oak Ridge uh, word there as well. And I, I know for a fact that they are, they situated there podium there when they're giving away trophies from the regattas now. They don't do it in another location, they do it there now. So that's ah. really, really neat. Uh, yeah. To follow up on that, um, we uh, had talked with several muralists, not just uh, Megan, about the possibility of doing another mural, and that's on uh, an ORNL Federal Credit Union property. That's up where the um, Anderson County Family Justice Center is off Broadway next to historic Jackson Square. And she actually was the one who was awarded that contract. And I, I know, Ray, I know you and Keith probably like this the most because it basically traces the history of yeah. Oak Ridge from you know, when it was uh, just farmland and all those things. Surveyors coming out and looking at what we need to do as far as 
making it our secret city. And then it goes through all the different aspects of that. Uh, it's got, uh, and it's represented too by not just um, males, but we have females, we have people of color, we have young people, old people. We have a lot of different representation in that, which I really thought that was a nice thing that Megan did. And then it also, it takes, it takes it from the beginning of Oak Ridge to where we are now in Oak Ridge's history. So those are two really popular murals. Um, if I have anything to say about it, guys, I'm gonna to try to get some more on those uh, murals brought in. One of which is the Emory Valley Water Tower. Uh, people have been asking me, well, that was the number one question when I became a city council member. When are you going to do something about this uh, eyesore of a water tower on Emory Valley Road? And I said, well, let me work on it. Uh, I've got some ideas for it, but it's, it's not just ideas. It also takes funding for things like that to happen. So actually, Megan has a, a couple of ideas, and we're still working on that as a, a mural. And then I would love to do something akin to the um, angel wings uh, that you see in um, Nashville, where people all tag that with the wings behind them. Although I would like to do something with a, um, what's the thing you put your hand on? It's a um, um, Van de Graaff generator. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would like to have something like that. And you paint, we're going to paint that on the wall somewhere. And then you go and stand in front of it and put your hand on it. And then we have something in the background. Instead of wings, we might have your hair doing all kinds of wild things, possibly up in the Jackson Square area. So there's a lot of ideas as far as murals are concerned. Uh, I don't want to get off on too many tangents here, but uh, I think we have a lot of other areas we can decorate. Uh, mentioning that, I'll, I'll take you on a tangent. There are two water towers or water tanks in Oak Ridge. One's on uh, Scarborough Road at the corner of South Illinois Avenue and Scarborough Road. Yeah. I'd like to see that one covered in a mural as well. Mm -hmm. And then you know that the bridge coming in from the uh, south coming up on Illinois Avenue and you uh, get at the top of Pine Ridge, mm -hmm. there's a really nice bridge across there that needs something on that south side saying, welcome to Oak Ridge or in some way doing something other than all those vines that are growing up on it. So yeah, keep idea. that in mind as a possibility too. Okay. <laughs> all right, you mentioned art in the city. Talk a little about your involvement with the AMSI Foundation and, and working with the museum to get some art displays outside. And, 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 and first, you know, tell us a little bit you know, some people may not know your your background. Oh, tell us just a little bit about why why you do so much art related things. Well, it, my my background is I'm an art educator, and again, I've done that for 35 years. But uh, unlike, well, just about like you and Ray, we don't do anything halfway. We we do it full steam ahead, or we we go over the top with stuff. So. Regarding that, uh, being an art educator is first and foremost a really rewarding job, being able to teach our youngsters how, they, how important the arts are as far as communication and the history of our community and things like that. But the, the main thing that I get out of this is it gives me the opportunity to, to visit different locations in our community and share my love of the arts uh, with that. Um, at one time, I actually was the uh, president and executive director of the Arts Council. And it's not just visual art that I respect, it's all the arts. Um, both of you know that Oak Ridge was conceived in science, but actually uh, it flourishes through the arts. Uh, in a, a town of 31,000, we have so many different arts organizations. We're just so fortunate. You can't, um, you can't go a, a week or two without being invited to a concert in the park or going over to see a, a, a mural or going to see a sculpture or any of those things. So we're just really fortunate to have so many things like that in museums. Now, with that being said, one of the things that uh, I was privileged to be a part of is uh, on the AMSI Foundation Board. And I appreciate Ray bringing me into that. It's a good group of people. Uh, we had a smaller group when I started, but we have a huge group now and they're just doing great things over there. Uh, in the yeah. space that they have, you, would, you wouldn't believe when you go through those doors what 
you see happening. So I, I always decide to do this. If I'm going to be on the uh, board or commission or anything like that, I don't occupy a seat and just put my name on the roll. I want to do something, give back to that organization. So some of the things I've worked with over there, the first thing was we placed a Einstein sculpture that's a sundial in front of AMSI. Uh, Ray knows about this. Uh, it's out there where those flagpoles are that he helped put out. Uh, but we put that out there and I was really fortunate to come upon a great deal. Um, one of the, the people at AMSI said, well, we can get this piece of sculpture for about a thousand dollars. I said, well, when can I write the check? Because I, you know, I, th I thought that was a great investment in the arts in our community. So that's on loan to the American Museum of Science and Energy. When people come through that front door, they stop over there and they take a look at it and they read the information about Albert Einstein and, and they, they see how the sundial works, which is really neat. And then um, if you uh, go to the right, um, I actually worked with ORNL Federal Credit Union. I, I got to mention Colin Anderson's name because he's such a supporter of the arts in our community. So he and I worked with Fisher Stoles, who was actually the artist who created Discovery, which is a, um, it's an atom and it's a, um, a DNA strand. And I, I saw that in Knoxville and it was coming down from their art in public places. And I thought, you know what? That is the perfect sculpture for AMSI. So um, I was able to convince ORNL Federal Credit Union to go ahead and purchase that piece. So they, they purchased that and they make three installments over the next three years and that's the uh, museums to keep, which is really neat. Uh, the next thing was um, uh, I have a friend who is actually a stained glass artist and she created this super terrific, very cosmic looking stained glass piece with LEDs in it. And um, she donated that. I mean, we're talking a couple of thousand dollars at least. She donated that to the American Museum of Science and Energy. And Alan Lowe was so receptive to that. He's the new director and I can't speak highly enough of him and the, the impact that he has over there. So we installed that about a year ago. And when people come in, they get to see that transition through all the different colors. We're trying to still figure out a name for it. So when you go in there, um, let them know what you think it should be named. So those are, those are the three sculptures I, I put my hands on right now. Uh, there are a lot of other pieces in the city of Oak Ridge, but those are three that I think I had a, a little hand in doing. Well, good. I think you, you're right to be proud of those. Those are some really special pieces. And it is important that we recognize uh, art in our community. I know you had, uh, as a part of your program at, at Jefferson Middle School, you were able to convince Ed Westcott, uh, the famous photographer from o Oak Ridge who made all those black and white images Mm -hmm. of the Manhattan Project. You were able to convince him to come and participate in your class. Talk to us a little bit about how that came about. Well, you know, it. I, I think that was one of the highlights of my teaching career. And I can tell you that I, I want to say that Emily Honeycutt and other members of Ed's family, when he came over to talk, said he's done a lot of these things. He's been to the Capitol. He's been to all those places, but this is more to him to have that interaction with our middle school students in the project that they did. And the project was actually driven by uh, myself as well as Chris Layton, who used to be our vice principal. Uh, he's also a former student of mine and we uh, combined efforts during this thing called Eagle Time where we were able to um, share a project, if you will, to uh, encourage more learning and showing the relationship between different disciplines at the school. So he was the history teacher, I'm the art teacher, and we decided we wanted to take some iconic Ed Westcott photos and have the students paint those in black and white using tempera paint. So they did that in my class, and then in Chris's class, they researched the history behind that particular piece of artwork or pho photograph and they actually did a, a little video clip and we attached QR codes to some of those. So if you go over to that piece of artwork and you scan that QR code, 
you can still listen to the student talk about Ed Westcott and that particular artwork, as well as see them uh, when they you know, were doing this particular uh, piece of artwork back when they were in middle school. A lot of them now are uh, high school graduates. And uh, we're just really fortunate the city of Oak Ridge allowed us in the municipal building to create a display of these. So if you go to the city manager's office, walking towards that, you will see a good 30 or 40 of these that are framed by the city of Oak Ridge and they're on display there and you can still scan the QR codes and, and uh, learn a little bit more about the, uh, the city. So the, the best part of it was, you know, seeing Ed Westcott and uh, learning about his history and also seeing him interact with the students. Uh, I mean, they thought he was a rock star and in many, in many ways, he is our local rock star. And I remember one of them had him sign the back of his t-shirt. That was just really cool. So, and um, Ray, we appreciate you uh, making that connection for us. I, I was happy to do that. Ed was a good friend. And, uh, and he and I got so close. As you know, he, he had a stroke and, and couldn't couldn't really speak well uh, the last several years of his life. But I learned that if I would call him on the phone, in other words, when he's, when he's with you, it, it's, it's tense and it, 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 he gets anxious. But if I would call him on the phone and ask him a question and then just be quiet, just sit there, he would come out with full sentences and Ooh. would talk really well on the phone. Uh, so we did that a lot, and uh, oh, I, for years I've gone by his house with one of his images and get him to sign it and then take it to a charity auction and raise money with it. And uh, I, I was really glad to get to be there at least once, I remember, when he was interacting with those kids. And uh, you're right, he, 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 couldn't, he couldn't speak then, but he could still communicate with them. He would just point at the image and, mm -hmm. and those kids could pick up on what he was trying to say about it, the question he was asking, and they would talk to him. And, and they had good exchange. One, one of them, if I remember right, one of them even did a, an image of him. Is that not right? Jim? Yeah, actually, I remember that right? Yeah, and I'll say a few things more about that. Uh, so one of them did an image of him. And then when we uh, let's say celebrated the Manhattan Project National Historical Park at Oak Ridge High School's uh, big amphitheater, um, he was there and everybody was there. And uh, we got to acknowledge him. And the student, uh, Daniel Malagon, brought the artwork up to him and uh, presented to him in front of everybody. And let's just say, uh, the student and Ed got a standing ovation from a packed house that day, which was just yeah. super, super wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one more thing, Ray, um, yeah. we, we celebrated the 70th uh, anniversary. I think it was the 70th anniversary of AMSI. And my last memory of Ed was he was actually cutting that birthday cake uh, yeah. that evening. And we've got some pictures of him doing that. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was sad to see him go, but he lived to be ninety seven. So I mean, he uh, he did really well, and and his mind was as sharp as a tack right up to the very end. I mean, if I needed to know something, I could ask Ed and guarantee you he would be able to tell me what, uh, especially if it had anything to do with one of his photographs. He knew exactly what had happened, and uh, and had not lost any of his mental acuity at all so you know we've nominated him for a presidential medal of freedom but we didn't get accepted yet but we haven't given up on it we've uh uh still got a contact in uh in the congressional offices that used to work in the white house on the team that makes those selections so we've got a connection and we're continuing to work that. Uh, you, I don't know what else to say other than we need to keep it in front of them and see if at some point we can't get that recognition. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> Jim, um, let's talk a little bit about, <clears throat> you know, as you said, you've been an art educator for 30 and then you said this is your 35th year. 
And, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you have only had one job teaching. <laughs> Is that correct? That's unusual. You've been at this. That was your first teaching job and you've been there 35 years. Is that correct? Yeah, let's let's call that one paid job. OK, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's been your one, your one, your real, your real job, you know. Um, but you know, and you've done like, like Ray said, you've done all kinds of things. But you're also now um, a member of Oak Ridge City Council. Yep, yep. This and, is. Uh, and were yeah. you elected? I was elected in 2016, and I served a four-year term, and then I was reelected, and I'm in my second four-year term. Uh, so I've really enjoyed that a lot. Mm -hmm. And and you are now a candidate for. I'm a candidate for the city House of Representatives in District 33 now on the Democratic ticket. All right. Very good. How, how how's how how's your campaign going? How's it looking? You know that's the number one question now I get. It's not when you're going to paint that water um, tower or. It's how's the campaign going? And I'm just going to be honest with you. I think it's going terrific. I have got a lot of supporters, um, particularly in Oak Ridge and in the Anderson County area. Um, I've, I've tried not to tick anybody off too much and hopefully been there to support a lot of different activities and organizations. And uh, um, I, I will continue to do that. So I'm just really fortunate to have so many good neighbors who are there with some great ideas and it's it's not all about me. It's about trying to represent our constituents here in Anderson County and in District 33. And that's what I'm going to try my best to do. I'm going to try my best to listen, just like I've done it with my students for 35 years. Hopefully, my wife will say I listen to her a lot too. <laughs> but try to listen to people, and uh, and it, it's not all about me. It's about kind of a consensus of ideas, and, and uh, that's that's where I am with that, Keith. Well, I mean, you know, uh, I'm surprised you have time for everything that you do, especially being a new grandpa. Tell us a yeah. little bit about that. Well, yeah, th some things are a little bit more enjoyable. I'll, I'll put it that way, particularly being a grandfather. Um, um, he's going on 10 months now, and uh, I never thought I could love anybody more than, <laughs> you know, my wife or my daughter. But I tell you, sometimes he's He's right up there because he, he's always happy and he's always glad to see me and always unconditional love. So he's just a good boy. Uh, there's, there's nothing like grandkids. I tell you, those, uh, they are special for sure. <laughs> Maybe I'll know that feeling one of these days, but you know, <laughs> it's kind of like I was telling, talking to you guys before the sh show started, you know, I don't have any daughters or granddaughters, but I've got some kids that I've been teaching in school this year that could, uh, I, 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 I think they could be my grand, I kind of feel about them how I would about granddaughters. You know, they're about the right age. So, uh, but anyway. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Jim's got a grandson and you're talking about your sons. Fanny and I had two boys. Then we had six grandsons mm -hmm. and my youngest son came to me and said dad you got one more chance if this is not a girl you're not going to get one it was a girl is there right? Kate. yeah and kate runs the family now no problem <laughs> oh my well, good well speaking of kids i want to brag on mine uh one of mine i mean i'll brag on both of them but uh i guess since we were here last my uh my oldest son ethan Graduated from the University of Tennessee with his master's degree in music, and uh, so we're anxious to see. He's a he's a he's a Oak Ridge High School graduate and played in the band the whole time he was there. And that uh, that experience when he had in high school music just really shaped what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. And mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so so I'm I'm thankful for the mentorship that he had when he was in high school in Oak Ridge, as far as giving him a sense of direction and purpose of, of what he wanted to pursue for a career, so. Yeah. All right. Well, that, uh, 
that's good to see him moving in the direction that he enjoys that yeah that's good to, good to see the kids do that all right jim anything else that you want to share with us before we wrap up here we really enjoyed uh getting some insights into the things that you've been involved in in, in oak ridge anything more yeah um i, I just speak a few things with regards to city council um that has been a really rewarding job and also being on planning commission uh mm. that's more of a boots on the ground kind of uh, work but the people i've worked with on council and planning commission they are just so dedicated uh, you know they're not making a lot of money and in most in some cases with planning commission no money at all these are volunteers who serve on city boards right. and um i'm just i want to i want to thank them for their service uh, and and all they do for the city of oak ridge and we really appreciate you know having comments from the, the uh, citizens uh, we get them a lot um, and uh, keep them coming um, a few things that I, I feel really strongly about was i was able to um, help with our school resource officers I, I did that several years back and you, you could where we i feel like we need more things like that more of a proactive rather than reactive response to anything that would be violence in our schools and with what happened just recently, I, my heart goes out to those folks and their families. And if there's anything we can do to try to prevent things like that in our community, we need to do that. Uh, and we need to support that monetarily. Um, one of the other things that I feel really strongly about was we had a group of citizens who wanted a disability advisory board. You know, one quarter of our, our citizens in our community are either disabled or they know somebody who is. And we need to have representation from those people in, in Oak Ridge and any community. So we were able to start that. In fact, our next city council meeting, I think in June, we will be voting on um, the first group of people who will serve on that board. And that's a new board with the city of Oak Ridge. We haven't had that. Uh, uh, and then this is, this is a creation of something quite special. So. So those are a couple of things. And there are other things with all the rezoning uh, requests that we're getting and all the industrial and residential development. I'm gonna tell you guys, you already know this, but Oak Ridge is growing, growing, growing. Yeah. And downtown Oak Ridge is just around the corner, the Wilson Street area. Uh, and we, we might even have to look at a different name for that that's more historically relevant uh, and have a competition of some sort. but. That is just a, a real big possibility uh, of having some really cool things as far as mixed use in that area. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, we have a lot of growth. Our school system is gonna more than likely have to build a new school in the next couple of years. So I, I'm sorry I opened that big can of worms, but <laughs> it, it's going the right direction. We're growing in the right way for the right reasons. I, I agree that there are good things on the horizon and actually good things already happening in Oak Ridge that the, the population increase, the uh, other things you talked about, the in, in industrial development that's happening. Just a little bit of hidden history here that people just might not know. You mentioned Wilson Street. The, Keith or, or, or Jim, either one of you, do you know where that name comes from? You know, Guilford Glazier's lawyer was named Wilson. Was oh, that right? And when he was building, when he was building the mall in the 1950s, middle 50s, they put that road through there, mm -hmm. and he gave that lawyer that name, named that road in honor of that lawyer. Okay. <laughs> but Jim, it's okay. We could call it Alvin Weinberg Drive. We could yeah. call it Ed Westcott Drive. We can call it anything we want to. Guilford's gone, and that lawyer is too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up. <laughs> Little known facts that uh, <laughs> aren't worth more than you paid for them. <laughs> well, guys, I know you're going to probably uh, draw this to an end, but one of the things I wanted to say before you did that is I wanted to thank both of you all um, for your friendship. I've known Keith a little bit longer than Ray. Uh, mm -hmm. Keith has uh, been there to actually introduce me to some of the history before I knew Ray, but 
Keith is a very talented filmmaker and yeah. he started the Secret City Film Festival and then he's also still doing the Knoxville Film Festival. And uh, I just I just feel like that is such a great experience. I was able to be a judge in that once and uh, you see some of my former students participate in that and get recognized. So I am just so glad that that's still going and Keith is still sharing his talents and his abilities and his knowledge with that. And Ray, if there's anything historical in the city of Oak Ridge, you're my first stop. And in my opinion, you will always be our Oak Ridge historian. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's an honor to do it and, and fun. I'm having a good time. Exactly right. All right, Jim, thank you so much. We really appreciate all that you do for the city of Oak Ridge, and we appreciate all that you, you do for, for just about everyone that you work with, and I'm sure they do too. So, Thank you. All right, Ray, who do we have coming up uh, next? Well, we have succeeded in uh, scheduling a time for Judith Stauber and Clifton Truman Daniel. Judith is the director, founder and director of the uh, Los Alamos uh, Japan Institute. And uh, she will be here. And, and Clifton is the grandson of President Truman. And he will be here as well. And we'll, we'll talk to them about uh, what, they're, what they're doing, what they're involved in, and hear something about the Truman Presidential Library, I'm sure. And and about Los Alamos and what Judith is doing out there. So I think it'll be a good session. We'll uh, look forward to that. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ray. Thank again. Thank you, Jim. And folks, uh, thanks for, thanks for watching. We appreciate it.